welcome back to Big John TV. On today's What's Cooking Wednesday, we're doing things a little bit different. Christmas is coming and I knew I wanted to do something in that arena, something to help you guys get ready for your Christmas dinner. So we put out a little poll on our YouTube community page and gave several selections. We had side dishes, desserts, appetizers, and drinks. The winner by a very slim margin was side dishes. So that's what we're going with today. I've got two simple side dishes. We've got easy make-ahead loaded mashed potatoes. Now you can get as fancy as you want with these. Anything you would like to put normally in a loaded baked potato can go into these mashed potatoes. Or you can keep them simple and just do cheese. I'll show you what I like in mine. And our second side dish, we're going to do Asiago smashed Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts tend to be something that people either love or hate, but I found if you cook them right, more people will love them. So come on, I'll show you how we put them together. All right, I've got eight potatoes here, which is about three pounds. A nice little garbage bowl. Let's get them peeled. I'm not super picky about needing to get all the skin. I don't mind if there's a little bit left on there. There we go, eight peeled potatoes. All right, now we're gonna dice these up into around about one inch cubes, just so they'll cook evenly, and into our pot. That's what we're All right, there we go, potatoes. And you want to start your potatoes for mashed potatoes in a pot of cold water. If you throw them into a pot of boiling water, the outside will cook first, the inside will stay raw, and you will have very lumpy mashed potatoes. So we will fill this with cold water now. I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of salt, just to give them a little bit of flavor while they're cooking. And onto the stovetop these go. 15 to 20 minutes should do it, just until they're fork tender. All right, and while those potatoes are starting on the stovetop, we're gonna to put together some of our ingredients that are gonna go into the mashed potatoes. In a small saucepan, we've got four tablespoons of butter and one cup of heavy whipping cream. And we're gonna set this on low on the stovetop. All right, on to our second side. We've got about a pound of Brussels sprouts here. I, I like to go for the smaller Brussels sprouts. You're going to trim the end off of each. You'll lose a few leaves, that's okay. And into a pot. I love Brussels sprouts. Pretty much any way they're cooked, I love them. I had them only steamed really growing up with butter and salt. And that's perfect for me. But I found they're even better with bacon or cheese or balsamic. They're better with things added to them. So we're gonna show you one today with garlic and Asiago. Right, last year, I converted John into a Brussels sprout lover with a bacon garlic Brussels sprouts. So let's see how he takes to this one with Asiago and garlic. All right, our Brussels sprouts are trimmed up and clean. Let's get some water on them. All right, there we go. They're all floating. We're gonna let these boil for about 10 minutes. 
All right, our Brussels sprouts are almost ready to come out of the water. In a small bowl, we're gonna put one tablespoon of olive oil, half a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. All right, so previously before we got, oh hi, I'm checking in here, I'm gonna help her, help her out a little bit. Um, she previously roasted off this whole, um, what do you call it bulbs, heads? Head of garlic. Head of garlic. Um, you take it, you cut the top off, open it all up, drizzle with a little bit of olive oil, wrap it in a foil pocket like this, throw it in your oven for a good hour at like 250, 300 degrees. Basically, it softens up the garlic, it makes it a little bit milder, not as strong, easier to eat. Um, you can spread this a lot easier like this too. So let's get one of these out now. See how easy that comes right out? I'd eat that right now too. You'll give it a smash with the pork. Okay. But you see how that is just complete? Like, it's not mush, but it's totally soft. Probably use two of those. Okay. Like, you could almost just. Just squeeze them? Sometimes. Sometimes. It's kind of satisfying. There you go. See? You want to break those down just a little bit. Okay. All right, and I'm going to come in here with my drained Brussels sprouts. They still have a nice green color. I didn't cook the heck out of them. I'm assuming we're tossing these. Yes, we are going to toss those around. It's like chicken wings, just not as good. <laughs> All right, I've got my cookie sheet here lined with Silpat. If you don't have a Silpat, I would highly recommend a piece of foil on your cookie sheet just to make it easier to clean up because we are going to top these with cheese and that gets messy. Mm -hmm. All right, All right. good. On to the pan, single layer, please. I want to make sure I get that. Yeah, scrape the goodies out. The garlic out. Because unfortunately, most of them stayed in the bowl, but that's okay. Right. So shimmy them around so that they're nice and separated. And I'm going to get a coffee mug or a teacup. I don't know what they call these things. Hot chocolate cup, that's what I use them for. Because now, we're going to smash. Do they need to be just enough room so I can smash them? Hey, get over there. <laughs> I don't know if the camera's picking up that sound, but this, yeah, it'd be a great ASMR. Squish. Oh, do this too, huh? You can try. Oh yeah. So you don't want to pulverize these. We're not making mashed potato Brussels sprouts. <laughs> We're just gently We're making smashed. mashed potatoes and, oh, see like that? Yeah. You want them to still look like a whole Brussels sprout there. Just slightly flattened. The fork doesn't work that bad. Cool. Too much left on the cup there. Yeah. These are going to go into our oven at 400 degrees for 10 minutes. All right, our potatoes are cooked. You want to show how the fork slides in and out of those? Fork tender potatoes. It really is just a fork. Let's see how it goes in. I don't have to like shove it in, it just kind of slides. There you go, fork tender. All right, slide that over. This is potato ricer I think is the technical name or a food mill I love it for making mashed potatoes it makes them super creamy without overworking the potatoes if you use a blender or not a blender a hand mixer it really overworks the potatoes and makes them kind of stiff and gummy you don't want gummy potatoes but if that's what you got make it work you can just smash them by hand still too nothing wrong with that either this is just easier and quicker yeah, a, a regular potato masher is just fine. I have those two. Ta-da, this is probably preferred to a mixer. And we're gonna scoop these in.
All right, you can see in the bottom, we got nice little itty bitty pieces of potato. So let's keep going. Last of the potatoes in. All right, our potatoes are all nicely riced. We're gonna add in the rest of our clove of garlic, the rest of our head of garlic. It's roasted, this looks like a lot, but it's super mild. It will not be overwhelming in this. All right, we're gonna add in our four tablespoons of butter and one cup of heavy whipping cream. I like to add a little bit at a time. Sometimes you need more liquid, sometimes you need less. I'd rather get it right the first time. Definitely more. Again, I'm trying to fold it. I'm not trying to like mix Whisk the it. yeah, mix the heck out of it. More. All right. I'm gonna add the remainder. Yep. It'll need it. It'll use it. <clears throat> Look at the texture. Look at those. That's pretty. Now we're gonna add in one cup. Let's see, let's get more centered here. Sure, okay. I've been sliding around. <laughs> one cup of sharp cheddar cheese. If you don't like sharp cheddar cheese, go with mild, go with Monterey Jack. Go Put what kind of cheese you like. Go in. with pepper jack, spice it up a little bit. That would be delicious as well. Alright, next ingredient before it goes into our baking dish is one cup of sour cream. Come on out here, scoop for me. Okay, again, folding it in, not getting crazy. Do just a sprinkle of pepper. You made a mess now. <laughs> Just a tiny bit of salt. Ooh, those are good. There it goes. Gonna spray our baking dish down with some cooking spray. And in the potatoes go. Alright, smooth this out. So if you're making these ahead of time, you can stop here. These can go in the fridge and be reheated day of. But we are making these for today, so we're gonna finish them off. To the top we're gonna add one, about one cup of cheese. I like to do a big handful. Maybe a little extra. All right, once our cheese is on, we're gonna top it with, what would you say, this is about a half a package of bacon? Yeah, it's like seven or eight slices. I'm losing a bit there. A nice, Not on my watch. Nice even layer. Everybody gets a bite of bacon. All right, and this is gonna go into the oven at 350 degrees for about five to 10 minutes, just till the top is nice and bubbly and starts to turn golden. All right, our Brussels have been in the oven for about 10 minutes. We've pulled them out. Now we're gonna sprinkle just a bit of Asiago on each one. I 
Let me know down below, do you have a favorite cheese? Asiago would definitely be one of my favorites. It's a little bit of a stinkier cheese, kind of similar to Parmesan. I love it baked onto bread. All right, and these go back into the oven for 10 more minutes until the cheese is nice and bubbly. All right, there you go. Everything's nice and melted. Our potatoes are at a great temperature. And our last ingredient, right before you eat it, you're gonna sprinkle on some green onions. If you prefer chives, you could use that. There you go. How delicious does that look? And it's nice and green for Christmassy, you see? Oh, red with the bacon, green with the onions. Exactly. Super festive. We'll plate this up and give it a taste. And next up. Our Brussels sprouts. You can see that the cheese has gotten nice and crusty, but they're still soft, they're not the Brussels sprouts themselves are still soft. So let's plate everything up and taste it all. I'm starving. I showed up a little bit earlier this time. I helped a little bit. Yep. <laughs> so we've got a plate of loaded mashed potatoes and smashed Brussels. Asiago smashed Brussels sprouts. There you go. These Brussels... Brussels in general, like she said earlier, these are a fairly new thing for me in life. Um, definitely as an adult, I would have ran from these as a child. Probably the same Jamie. Jamie, you want to eat one of these? No. What are they anyway? Brussels sprouts? Oh, I don't like them. You don't like them. <laughs> yep. Maddie, you want to try one? Heck no. So the best part about them is the little, like, cheesy web that comes off. Am I sharing with you? Or you can have your own. I'll probably eat all of this. <laughs> I'm like, I'm seeing the plate. I want to eat. The edges of the Brussels get a little bit crispy. The cheese balances really nicely to take away from the cabbagey smell and taste of Brussels wow. sprouts. Maddie was commenting that they smelled very good. They're okay. <clears throat> I guess that's a, a good enough review. From a child, a Brussels sprout being just okay, I think that's acceptable. Side note. Maddie, growing up, hated mashed potatoes. I still don't Right really now, them. even, they're not her favorite. So the fact that she allowed me to feed her mashed potatoes just now, fairly All impressive. Right. Here we go, buy those. Mm -hmm. So it's everything you love about a baked potato mm -hmm. in your mash. And see, the nice part about this, too, is that the base, the mashed potato recipe itself, is killer. Solid. Really, really good. Do what you want with it from there. Right. You could spice it up. You could make a Tex-Mex flavor. Do some green chilies in there. Jalapenos. Yeah, that'd be delicious. I don't like jalapenos. Well, then you wouldn't do that, would you? <laughs> but other people might. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit <clears> the... <throat> what is it? Like, subscribe, share with your friends. Thank you. But thank you guys for helping us out with this one. We're using that community tab. We're going to try and do that more often. Get some more interaction with you guys with video choices and options. Yeah, it was fun. It was nice because we were debating. Uh, we let you guys decide. And it was a close win. So we have to do the desserts next week. But Maybe. Thanks for, uh, thanks for helping us out with that. All right, guys. Bye. Catch you on the next one. See you.